Hey everyone, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, I'm going to explain you the Linux file system and we are going to cover the key concepts. For example, the Linux file system, the permissions, the types of file and the directory structure. So first and foremost, in Linux, everything is a file. Whether it's a hardware, whether it's any type of device, whether it's a networking socket, everything is represented in a file. Now with this, the advantage is that the files are located as part of a directory. Now we are going to understand how this concept is implemented in Linux. So first and foremost, let's look into a simple command that is ls-ltr or ls-l where I've created a few files. Now, as you can see here, uh, I have a file called this is a file then there is a this is a link to file and then this is also a file so i've created these three files and then i've created a directory called this is a directory on the left you can see there are some details now let us understand what these details are all about so if we break down these details it can be separated into two parts first is the type of file and then the rest of the characters define the permission. Now these permissions can be further broken down into three triads or th group of three characters. The first triad or the first three characters represent what is the permission to the owner or the person or the user who owns the file or who has created the file. Generally, if a person creates a file, he is the default owner, but that ownership can be changed as well. The second is the group. So if there is any specific configuration or setting in terms of read, write, or execute. So R means read, write, W means write, and X means execute to the group. And the third is for all the others who are not part of group or who are not part of owner, what is the access? So as I mentioned, R means read, W means write, and X means execute. Now, as you understand, Linux is a multi-user system, right? In case of this multi-user, how we arrange is basically, suppose a user has created a file, he or she is the owner of that file. That's pretty simple. But for example, we have a department called students and we have added a few users into that department or the group. We need to provide the similar access to that group. So what we can do is based on the second triad, we can provide access to that group. Third is everyone else, all the world, so we can define if you want to give public access or not. So generally, in case you are hosting a website, you would want to give a public access. And that's what is defined in the third concept or the third. And that's what it is. And that's what is defined in the third triad. So these three triad is basically what combines the permission of the file. So as I mentioned, everything is a file and you can actually check what is the permission of the file with the command ls-l and you will also see what is the type of the file. Now let us understand what are the types of the file. So we can categorize the types of file into two categories. One is the regular and other is the special. So in case of a regular file, we will have a normal file, which is represented by a dash or hyphen. Then you have a directory, which is represented by a D. And then you have a symbolic link, which is represented by L. And when you check using LS, or ls l you will see that this link is being pointed to uh, the source of the file and if it is in different directory it will be presented in the uh, different directory as well now keep in mind directory is also a file which can contains different which can contain different files as well then you have some special files which is basically fifo block and character and socket so these are special files now you can see in the slash dev you will have a type of file which is represented by C, that is the character device. And similarly, you will be having a block type of file in, uh, you can say, in slash dev directory as well. If you want to see the uh, FIFO file, you can create uh, a new file by mkfifo. And you can see that there is a P type of file represented here. Now let us understand what is the directory structure. So the directory structure in Linux is kind of an inverted tree where the root is on top. So that is the root. And you can think of it, uh, think of rest of the directories as leaves of the tree. 
but that's how the directory structure is is it's kind of an inverted tree and generally we have the following directories and i've given a uh, you can say complete description of it we'll have binary which is pointing to user bin libraries which is pointing to user lib and s bin which is pointing to user s bin so binaries contain essential commands for example ls cp all these commands which are used by users lib contain the essential shared libraries and sbin contains the system binaries which are only to be used by system administrator or the uh, you can say system itself now in the new operating system these are pointing to a different directory called user bin just to have a clear separation right and for example boot and then you have other directory for example boot which contains bootloader files kernel etc you will have dev which has the device files you have etc which contains the system configuration file this will also contain your etc password your uh, other system config as well then you have the user home directory for example i've created a user admin so my home directory would be in slash home slash admin and the root is basically the home directory for the root user you will have media and mount where you are essentially mounting any external uh, data uh, storage for example a disk drive or a usb drive and you mount it to these directories then you have opt which is for optional packages uh, for example if you want to install an uh, optional package you can install it in the opt proc is the virtual file system for uh, kernel memory so you can uh, so this is the virtual file system for kernel info and it contains the processes so you can look into the processes uh, and generally it is slash proc slash the PID or the process ID. For example, slash proc slash one would be the, the process ID one directory and it will contain all the details of that process. I've already explained root, which is the home directory for the root user. Run is the runtime variable data. It's mostly used for any type of uh, applications or binaries that would store some type of runtime data. SRV is for services provided by systems. Sys is the virtual file system for system information. Temp is, as name suggests, temporary files. And user is for user utilities and application. And you can find the slash user, slash has been, slash lib, slash bin, etc. In, in this directory now, rather than the home directory, which are actually, uh, rather than the root directory, which is actually linking to these directories. And last is the var, which contains variable files, logs, slash var log slash var mail etc so this is the directory structure now let us take a deeper look into the directory by traversing into each each one of them and finding out what type of System files here. are contained in them now i'm in my terminal and i will also go to my file browser i will just go to the root directory so in the root directory, you can see there are a bunch of folders and I will explain what is the content of each folder and what is the functionality. There is a easy way to do so. So I will go to the root directory and if you just do ls hyphen l and in a reverse direction, so it will show you the complete list of the directory here. So there is another way to do so using a command called re and I will just do level one. First and foremost is bin or binary. This contains the essential command binaries. And as you can see, it is pointing to a directory called slash user slash bin. Now what is here, you can just go to the bin directory and do an ls and you can see there are these bunch of programs here. All of them are green, which is, which means these are executable permission. And if I show you, so you can see they have the permission to be executed as well. So they have the permission X, which means they are, they have the permission to be executed. Keep, keep in mind, if you are seeing this in green color, this means it, it can be executed. Now you have nano, which is basically a, a text editor. You will have unzip, you have uh, ls, which is the command that we use. All the essential commands are basically located in this directory. That is user bin or slash bin, which is pointing to user bin. So I'll just go to the command tree again, tree hyphen L hyphen one. Interestingly, you will see that there are three directory that is bin dot user is merged, lib dot user is merged, and sbin dot user is merged. 
Now, as you can see here, these three are basically for the directories, for example, bin or binary, which is pointing to user slash bin, lib, which is pointing to user, uh, user slash lib, and lib64, user slash lib64, as bin is pointing to user slash as bin. So this is basically telling that these directories are actually a symlink and they are pointing to these directory. This has been implemented in Debian. Now the next is boot. So boot contains the bootloader files. So if I just go to, so the boot directory contains everything required for the boot process. And you will see the kernel itself here, which is basically VM LINUZ or VM Linux. And these are the various uh, files which are required for boot. For example, you have memtest, you have system map, you have the old uh, Linux kernel, you have the current Linux kernel. And then you will ha also have the bootloader file, which is basically grub and this system map file, which is the map file present here. This one. Next in this is CD-ROM, which is as the name suggests is basically for your CD-ROM. Anything if you put into your CD-ROM, if you have that in your laptop, it will be mounted here. Then you have dev. Dev is basically devices. So this contains all the hardware that you that have been connected to your laptop or your system. So if I just do slash dev, oh, you can see these are the type of hardware that are currently mounted, right? And you can see the hard disk as well, which is basically SDA or HDA, depending upon the type of hard disk that you have. TTY is basically your terminal. So you can see there are a lot of terminal where you can attach. And then navnl is a special file that discards all the data written to it. So if you want to, you know, uh, purge any data, you can write it to slash dev slash null, which is this one. So as I mentioned, slash dev is basically all the hardware files. Now next is home, oh, sorry, next is etc or etc, it is etc. This contains system wide config files. And for example, it will have etc slash password. It will have certificates, like you have this uh, certificates as well. You will have uh, your resolve.conf. So any config, additional config that you require is basically present in slash etc directory. You'll have host directory, you will have network config. All these configuration are present in the slash etc directory. Next is slash home, which is basically your home folder and any user uh, that you have created because Linux is a multi-user system. Any user that you have created will have a directory here in the home, right? Next is slash lib, which is the libraries. These contain essential uh, shared libraries which are required by bin or sbin programs. Next is media or mount, which is any uh, additional drive or directory that you mount on Linux, you can mount into these two uh, directory, media and mount. Next one is lost and found is basically anything you delete will go to lost and found. Next is opt. So opt is optional and any optional programs uh, that you want to install uh, would be installed here in the opt directory. Then next is proc. Proc, are, proc is basically uh, processes. So this directory contains files which are basically processes and you can see you have the process one which is the systemd. So you can cat it and you can see the information as well, detailed information as well. For example, you can have proc cpu info and you can see all the details of your CPU. You can also check uh, memory info and you can see the details of the memory here. What is the current status of the memory? So each process uh, will have its own directory. So each uh, directory will uh, represent a process uh, named after its process ID. So for example, if you go to slash proc slash one, this will be the first process that has been initialized. And you can see the details here, what are the various, uh, you can say files that have been used to, you know, run this process. Then you have run. So 
it contains the runtime variables, uh, for example, that are required for system services. And it may also have your log files. So log files are basically if a process is working on any file, it will put a temporary log so that no other process can write to it. So that would be part of your run directory. So sbin is system binary. It is something similar to the binary here, but it is mostly used for administrative tasks. And it is mostly used by the system administrator. So if I just do ls slash sbin, you will have you know, some of the additional functionality, for example, IPv6, IP init, etc., that are used for system administrator. So that's why it's called sbin or system binary. Next is SNAP, which is used for SNAP, a package manager in Ubuntu. Then you have SRV, which is services. So it holds the data for services when the services are running. For example, if you are running a web server, it would be hosted here in SRV slash dub dub dub. So if I do SRV, right now we don't have anything, which means we are not using it for anything. Then you have sys, which is basically system. This is a virtual file system just like PROC, and it provides information about drivers, uh, devices, some kernel features, etc. So if you just do sys, it is basically having you know system level files. Then slash temp, which is basically the temporary files. Then you have slash user, which is Unix system resources. It's not uh, a user, it's the Unix system resources. So it will have all the, uh, you can say utilities for Unix. For example, you will have slash user, slash bin, slash USR, slash lib, slash USR, slash local, etc. So if you just check this one, you will have user bin, lib, local, sbin, share, etc. And then last is the var, which is the variable. So it contains a variable for various stuff. For example, system log files, uh, mail queues, print spools, temporary files, etc., and some web server file in case you have a web server installed. So these are the details of the Linux, uh, uh, you know, directory structure. I've created a table and uh, you know attach it to this lecture, as well as I've given the detail in the uh, as a document as well. So go through it, and in case you have any questions, do ask me. Thanks for watching this video, and have a great day.